Okay, so welcome back. Um, this is Numbers and Operations Fractions, and through these series of this series of lessons, we will be developing an understanding of fractions as numbers. If you hear music in the background, it's because my daughter is watching a movie in the other room, and this is in my house. It's not in a sound booth, so I don't have any um, soundproofing. Just ignore any extra noises you hear. Okay, so today's objective, this is a long one, look at that. But that's okay. I'm going to break it down for you so it's all good. Okay, so we are going to represent a fraction 1 over blank. And this one I didn't put a D for denominator yet. I'm going to do that here pretty soon. I think it's the next lesson. Let me peek. Yes, it is. 1 out of blank on a number line diagram by defining the interval from 0 to 1 as the whole and partitioning it into blank equal parts. Hmm. That sounds like what we've already learned, but with one thing added to it. So let's explore a little bit. Okay, so math words that we know and that we keep seeing. There are three of them in this lesson. Fraction. Those are the numbers between the whole numbers. You have whole, like in whole numbers. Those were the numbers you learned to count in kindergarten. And um, equal parts. And the, that means that all the parts are the same size. I had to open the door for my dog. He wants in. Okay, there we go. Okay, so now we have um, a word that we have already looked at before, partitioning. Now the other word was partitioned, and we said divided. And this is partitioning, the suffix changed to ing. So instead of saying divided, we're going to say dividing. We want to keep it consistent. So I'm going to write dividing. Your reading can help you immensely in math, trust me. Okay, so those are the words that we already know. I know we haven't gotten to the action word yet. We'll get to that in a second. But with my red pen, I want to underline some new words that have been added into this. And this is what's going to change things up. You've already learned how to do this other stuff, and now we're going to bring it up a notch, okay? So the first one is number line diagram. Now, you might recognize two out of three of those words. See, I'm talking in fractions now, but I'm going to define that for you, okay? And then defining, oh, I just used that word myself. We're going to talk about what that means, and then this word interval. Okay, so number line diagram is basically, for us, going to be an open number line. A diagram can be a picture, a graph, a number line, anything like that, but in this case it's a number line diagram, so we use an open number line. Defining means to determine or to decide. And because we have the ing ending, we're going to say determining. So it fits in our sentence. And interval means space. Okay, and our last thing that we need to do is to look at our action word, which is represent. Now you've probably heard that used as slang, like, dude, you represent, or whatever. I'm not good at that kind of slang. But anyway, in this case, Represent means show, because it's the beginning of a sentence, I'm going to start it with a capital letter. So we are going to show. Now before we had to just understand, but those understandings will help us to show this information, because this is something you can actually do for me. Okay, so we will show a fraction, 1 over denominator, on an open number line. Let me write an here because when we change from a consonant sound to a vowel sound we have changed the article to an. So on an open number line by determining, and I spelled it wrong, determining. I got to that in and just stuck a g after it. Okay, hopefully it's not too messy. Okay, by determining the space from 0 to 1 as the whole and dividing it into blank equal parts, whatever that denominator is, okay? So let's read through that again. I won't stop to make more comments and add things. Okay, here we go. Show a fraction, 1 over blank, 
on an open number line by determining the space from 0 to 1 as the whole and dividing it into blank equal parts. Okay, so we worked with candy bars yesterday. So we are going to um, go from candy bars to number lines, to open number lines. Now you know an open number line can be f start anywhere and end anywhere. But our, this open number line for doing fractions is going to start at zero and end at one because we're only working with one candy bar. Okay, so here's my candy bar. Okay, underneath it, I'm going to draw a number line. And my number line is going to start with zero and it's going to end with one. Okay, now I'm not going to put anything in the middle yet because it's going to depend on my equal parts. So I'm going to do um, halves with this one. We're going to divide this in half or two equal parts. So if I need two equal parts, that means I'm going to put one line and I need to put it in the middle because it's equal parts. And I do the same thing on my number line. See that? Notice I made my candy bar the same size as 0 to 1 because this represents one candy bar. And I divide it into, divided it into two equal parts. So I drew my line on my number line right underneath where I divided my candy bar. That's really important. Okay, so we're only doing one out of blank on, on this lesson. So um, this is going to be like super simple, but you really need to understand this in order to go on to the next lesson. Okay, so now I have my candy bar, I have my number line, and now I'm going to color in one part, because that's what it says. Show a fraction one out of blank. So this is going to be two for the denominator, because I have two equal parts. I'm going to color in one equal part. And because it is one part, I can put my dot right there where my um, little dividing line crosses over the number line. And underneath it, I can write my fraction. I have two equal parts and I've colored in one. So it's one out of two. Cool, huh? All right, so now we're going to do that adding one thing again like we did before. So let me do another, um, let me put all my markers down here, my hands are full of markers. I'm going to draw another candy bar. And this one I'm going to do three equal parts. Oh, let me, I'm jumping ahead here. Okay, so draw my candy bar. I'm going to draw my open number line. It needs to be slightly longer than my candy bar because I've got to put my arrows at the end. Okay, but I'm going to put my zero at the beginning of my candy bar, and I'm going to put my one at the end of the candy bar. Okay, now, like I said before, I'm going to do three equal parts. So three equal parts, I need two vertical lines. So I'm going to go one, two. Once again, if you notice patterns I'm not mentioning, just make a note of it, and you'll find out we'll go back to it later. So I have one, two, three equal parts. I'm going to divide my number line underneath the candy bar at those same intervals, so same spaces, okay, and I'm going to color in one part. Okay, so there's my one part. So my one part begins here and it ends here. So right here is where my fraction goes, okay? And this is one out of three equal parts. So it is one third, one out of three. Okay, numerator over denominator. Colored parts over equal parts. Okay, so I'm gonna do one more. We're gonna do four equal parts. Unfortunately, my paper is not long enough to um, keep going underneath or you would probably see more patterns, but that's fine, we'll get to the patterns later. Candy bar. Number line slightly longer, arrow at each end, put my zero line at the beginning of my candy bar, and put my one line at the end of my candy bar, 
And now I'm going to divide it in four equal parts, which means I need, say it for me, that's right, three vertical lines. And I'm going to make my little lines down here to match up. And so now I'm going to color in one equal part. And my equal part ends right here. So that's where my dot goes. And that is one out of four equal parts. One out of four. Okay, last fraction. Candy bar. When you're taking a math test and you are doing this, if you need to draw candy bars, if you have to draw candy bars for the rest of your life, it's fine with me. If that helps you to rem bleh, if that helps you to remember how to do this, okay. Number lines slightly longer, arrows at each end, lines at each end of my candy bar. Zero here, one there. This one is going to have. Mm, let's do five equal parts. We need four vertical lines. One, two, three, four vertical lines. I need to make a mark crossing my number line. Make sure these little lines cross over your number line because you're dividing your number line into equal parts. Okay, now I'm going to color in my one equal part. I have not used my favorite color yet, so I'm going to do that now. And the end point for my colored in part is one. It's right here. Oops, sorry. Skipped a um, step. So there's the end part for that um, colored in part of the candy bar and that is one out of one two three four five equal parts so that is one out of five so we showed a fraction one out of something we had one out of two one out of three one out of four and one out of five on an open number line right there by determining the space from zero to one, which we did. We drew our candy bars and then we transferred those lines to our number line as the whole, the zero to one is the whole. It's the same as the size of the candy bar and dividing it into equal parts. We divided it into the number of equal parts that we needed. Okay, there is one more understanding that you need to have as part of this lesson, and we're going to break it down just like we did the objective. This is part of the same objective. It's just a lot to present all at once. So I wanted to do it at the end of the lesson. Okay, so it says, recognize that each part has size one out of blank, and that the end point based at zero locates the number one out of blank on the number line. Okay, so let's break this down. We have end point based at zero. So I'm going to underline that with my red pen because that's a really new concept. Okay, and we're going to call that the starting point. You're always going to start at zero. When you do your skip counting for your multiplication tables, you always start at zero. Two times zero is zero, two times one is two, and so on. Zero, two, four, six, eight, ten. And when you start doing um, graphing and um, plotting points on a graph, you will have to use zero as your starting point. There's a fancier math word for it, but we're not going to worry about that right now. We have enough fancy math words to worry about. So the ending point based at zero is your starting point. Your action word for this one is recognize. And that means that you need to notice. So you're going to notice this, and we'll talk about it in just a second. Okay, so here's what else you need to know. Notice that each part has size 1 over blank, and that the starting point locates the number 1 out of blank on the number line. So you have to recognize that every candy bar starts at 0. Okay, that's the first part. And that each of these is one out of however many equal parts. So we're going to do more of this for the next lesson, but that's something that you need to understand. The candy bar begins at point zero on the number line, 
can't start it anywhere else. Kind of like measuring with a ruler. You've got to start at your zero. And you've got to recognize that each of these is one out of however many um, your equal parts are. Okay? So we will do this more in the next lesson.